fourth cutting of alfalfa in Nebraska is 60% complete, near the five-year average of 63%, but 14 points behind last year. Earlier this week, we talked with Nebraska Extension Forage Specialist Bruce Anderson about the options for selling hay and the importance of noting the winterizing period of alfalfa plants. Well, alfalfa plants, they tend to be able to detect how long the days are getting, and they also can feel that the temperatures are starting to decline. So around the middle part of September, uh, the plant changes its metabolism and starts taking some of the nutrients that it's producing in photosynthesis. And instead of using those nutrients for growth, it starts transporting those nutrients down into the root and crown system, saving those nutrients then to help the plant be able to survive the winter and then have some of those nutrients remaining in the springtime to start the spring growth. It goes through this process, oh, for about a four or five week time period before we get to our killing freeze time period here in the fall. How does that process affect when you should cut? Well, we certainly don't want the alfalfa plants to be stressed excessively during that time period. So here in, in Nebraska, between about mid September and mid October, uh, that's the primary winterizing time for these plants. Harvest during that time period can be a little bit risky, especially if the alfalfa plants have been under any kind of undue stress during that year or uh, uh, during previous years uh, due to diseases or variety selection, things of that nature that may influence how well those plants are able to withstand winter conditions. What's the recommendation then for those growers? Well, typically what we're gonna look at is that if you're looking at trying to cut during that time period, and oftentimes we have some pretty nice hay out there at that time, uh, we need to consider how much stress we put on the plants. If we've been cutting them frequently, maybe we're getting into a fifth cutting, uh, we really need to be a little bit careful in those situations uh, about timing a harvest at that time period. If it's only a third or maybe a fourth cutting, uh, the plants usually are in pretty good shape. They've had plenty of time to rebuild the root systems and so they can be cut. Also, uh, we may want to take a, a look at what the prices or value of that alfalfa might be. Uh, if we're going to be able to make that alfalfa hay into a, a high value product, maybe into the horse market or to dairy, uh, it may be worth taking a little bit of risk, uh, a risk that either loss of a little stand or a little lower yield during first cutting next year uh, to capitalize on those higher prices. But if it's just going to be hay that's relatively low value, uh, especially in a year when we have lots of hay avail available uh, and don't necessarily need it for our own operation, uh, we may be better off just letting that alfalfa go and not cutting it during that time period. After all, after the winterizing period is over, we could cut it at that time period with very little risk, or we could graze it at that time period uh, and expect that the alfalfa will come back the next spring in real good shape. Can you go more into the pros and cons of selling hay into this market? When we're dealing with a, a market this year where the difference in price for the high value hay, for the dairy hay or the, or the horse hay or other high value hay, may be 60, 75, $80 a ton more than for the hay that's uh, gonna be fed primarily in a feed lot or uh, to our beef cows, uh, that decision in terms of whether or not it's going to be worth taking that extra cut really becomes a, an important and valuable consideration for using that hay. And when we're going to have the opportunity to get the high value, oftentimes it can be worth going after it, even if we need our own hay. Because if we're able to sell that hay for $60, $75 more than we could buy some of the neighbor's excess hay, uh, we can find ourselves a real easy profit gain from that uh, without risking too much on our own alfalfa, uh, both in terms of its stand or the feed that we're going to have available for our own livestock.